hello, everybody. Um, it's great that you're here, um, and uh, it's great that uh, we're going to be able to be talking with Secretary Clinton and Dr. Clinton, who you see on the screen, Hillary and Chelsea. So we're in for a happy half hour. Uh, I, I wanted to start actually by putting a question to you, Chelsea, because we last met when we were talking about your book uh, that you co-authored uh, and is very relevant to your new production company, The Book of Gutsy Women. Uh, Chelsea, just tell us very quickly what you were trying to do uh, with Gutsy Women in this book. Well, Mary, thank you so much um, for being with us. And we, uh, just to be presumptuous and speak on behalf of my mom as well, certainly wish that we could be with you in person, although I'm quite jealous the two of you will be together next week in person. <laughs> Um, you know, we wrote the Book of Gutsy Women really as a continuation of a conversation that we've been having for my whole life about women who inspire us, who motivate us, who challenge us. And especially now that I'm a mom, um, we thought about the stories that we wanted to share with my daughter and with my sons, um, ones that have meant so much uh, to both of us, um, really just over the, the many years and decades. And so we hope that by inviting readers into kind of this conversation people will understand why these women mean so much to us and we hope that certainly at least some of them uh, will mean something to anyone who picks up the book so it's a kind of story a set of stories of kind of unbullyable unbatterable feisty Unbound. gutsy awkward women <laughs> right just yes. like we are right um, <laughs> Can I ask you, because again, this has got relevance to what we're going to be talking about. Um, was it an easy and happy collaboration, Hilary, between mom and daughter with their problems? It really was, Mary. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was challenging in some respects because, you know, she is uh, by far younger and much more technologically savvy. Uh, but it turned out to be a very happy and productive collaboration. And it was this book that really motivated us to start our production uh, company with Sam Branson, uh, Hidden Light. And this is our first uh, production. We have a uh, deal with Apple TV and Chelsea and I are bringing uh, gutsy women, uh, some who are in the book, but mostly who are uh, younger, um, I guess I would say edgier, uh, really interesting women doing many different things. Uh, in the world today uh, to the screen. And we've been having an amazing time uh, traveling around, meeting these women, having a chance to have them filmed so that their stories get to an even larger audience. And so, although we can't under our contract talk about the specific women that we are filming, I can guarantee you there will be some names you know and some names you're glad that you got to know uh, because of this incredible cast of women uh, that we have been able to film and it's been exciting to bring their stories uh, to the screen. And I think it's gonna be both surprising, entertaining, inspiring and uh, exciting. I want to take you back just a little bit because you make it sound very easy. You say, um, you know, and that's why we got together with Sam Branson and we started a production company and this is our first. Well, how actually did that coming together um, into a production company? You know, lots of people write really good books. They don't then say, I know, I'll start my own production company. So how did it happen? Well, let me start and let, let Chelsea add a lot of the details, Mary, because once the book came out, we began getting quite a number of offer, offers from various uh, kinds of uh, media companies to option the book. And we were actually in London uh, on our book tour where we were interviewed by you again uh, when uh, Chelsea got an email from Sam Branson, whom she had gotten to know, uh, talking about how excited he was about the book. He had a production company, but he wanted to go more global and, and really include a lot of, uh, you know, interesting and, and inspiring content. And so Chelsea said, what do you think? And I'll let Chelsea take it from there. 
You know, and, and so we met Sam, I guess that's the kind of next part of the story uh, while we were in London. And I think, you know, we're just so immediately struck by how kind of committed we all were to um, kind of sharing women's stories, sharing kind of amazing galvanizing stories of women and girls. And that for us, you know, the book of Gutsy Women really was just sort of the most recent kind of installment in this work for us. And I think what meant so much about you know, Sam and his team's kind of ethos and approach was that while, yes, they were interested in kind of taking the book of Gutsy Women and, and turning it into a show, they also were even more interested in using that as a platform to tell hopefully countless stories of, of women and girls who are um, indefatigable and determined um, to build a different and a brighter and a more fun and dynamic um, life for themselves um, and and for all of us. And so I think it was really, Mary, that sense of, yes, like this, this book is something special, but even more, we feel called to this broader work that we really resonated with. And now, you know, fast forward are so I'm excited to kind of be formally um, kind of in in production and, and making uh, making gutsy women. Just tell us about the name. If I could just add, we came up with um, the the name oh, for our new funny. company, um, Hidden Light, because we really do want to cast a light on uh, those who are often overlooked uh, or forgotten characters uh, to try to demonstrate there's hope and resilience and gutsiness. Uh, in the darkest of times and places. And in addition to Gutsy Women, which is already in production, we have been you know, moving on optioning uh, other works. We've got a, a slate of projects with a great team led by uh, Johnny Webb and Roma Canna. And it's been exciting because you know, we believe passionately in uh, bringing these stories uh, to light. And, you know, for too long, I think it's fair to say, attention's been paid primarily to the loudest voices in the room. Uh, yet flying under the radar, there are generations of change makers in every place across the globe who are making a difference. And that's who we're gonna celebrate. They're sung and unsung, they're known and unknown. But I think today, particularly, there's a hunger for people to try to figure out how to make sense of our world, how to make sense of the time in which we find ourselves. And we want to make a big contribution to that. So, you know, and, wait, and Mary, can I just add, I want yeah, to add sure. one thing, which is just, you know, for me, I think I felt um, so kind of com compelled and obligated in the best sense to um, kind of embark on this broader journey with my mom in part because of uh, the reactions that I had experienced when I wrote my first um, picture book, She Persisted, which is also sharing stories of, of women that have meant a lot to me throughout my life um, for much younger audiences, so for, for, for my kids and even younger kids. And Mary, I was so struck then when I was writing the she second She Persisted book, how many people said, like, don't you think we've, like, the pendulum has swung too far? Like, do you really think we need more stories about <laughs> Girls. Like, do you really think like boys are going to read those stories? And I was so aghast. I was like, first of all, you know that most books are still written centered on boys, written by men. So like, there hasn't really been an overcorrection. And what about all of human history, which Mary, you know, yeah. I do. Um, and by the way, like my sons also really enjoy these stories. So I think, you know, when we were kind of really thinking about um, kind of what more could we do, should we do, must we do, you know, I had also had these recent experiences that just were sort of the grist of like, oh, we still got a lot of work to do. And so much of that work, I think, has to be done through storytelling. What I want to know, though, is if you take a step back here and think about the TV landscape. Um, and you say, what's, what's hidden light? What, what's it going to add, really, to, you know, where does it fit in television? Who do you want to watch it? I mean, kids and boys and women and men, but what, where is it sitting 
in yeah. TV. And if I were, you're going to be really mad at me now, sorry. Um, but if I were to say there might just be a few people in the world who didn't say, oh, do we need any more of these stories about women? But they might say, it's all, it's all very good, but isn't it a bit worthy? You know, it's not a bit sort of seriously worthy. Now, how would you no. reply to that? Well, I, I would reply, Mary, that we are trying to reach a very broad audience. That certainly is our intention. And some of the stories are worthy. Some are fun. Some are entertaining. Some are informative. You know, we just launched our first series, If I Could Tell You Just One Thing, with YouTube Originals. Now, think of the audience for YouTube Originals. It's fun. It's glossy. Uh, but it's also poignant and insightful. And it's been my experience, and I think this is pretty broadly uh, shared. There is a hunger for generational understanding from both ends of the age spectrum. Why do young people feel and think the way they do? And for young people, what is going on? And we want to tell stories like we're doing with this uh, YouTube original, uh, for the for younger audiences, and that's who this is aimed at. And it's presented by YouTuber Patricia Bright. It's a four-part series. Yeah. Uh, it was launched Thursday last week. Uh, we had you know Baramis Loella Benjamin speaking about what it was like to arrive from Trinidad to the UK, how her mother advised her to stand up against racism. Yeah. We have comedian and author Catherine Ryan opening up as to what it's like being a single mom. And, you know, British rapper, singer, songwriter, uh, Stefan Don sharing what it's like facing judgment for having a baby at 17. These are really very pertinent stories. And we're also doing scripted projects. So, for example, one of our favorite books that Chelsea and I have shared over many years is a book about a character named Maisie Dobbs, which is uh, a series about a World War I field nurse who turns into a detective, and we've <laughs> just optioned it. It's an international bestseller by Jacqueline Winspear, and we love the character, and it goes from World War I to the Spanish Civil War to World War II. She comes of age at a time of great social upheaval. So. I, I think we yeah. are certainly in the unscripted as well as the scripted uh, area trying to find content that will have a very broad appeal. And you are a generation apart, you know, obviously. Yeah. Um, do you think you've got different aims? I mean, are, are you trying to do different things with this, Chelsea? Do you always agree with her? Well, I, I think those are different questions, Mary. I certainly don't <laughs> always agree with her. Um, <laughs> I think we have the same um, aim, but we have, uh, you know, different, and I do believe complementary perspectives on how best to, you know, achieve that. Um, and and I I wanted to underscore what my mom said about you know, the the multi generational, you know, element. I think, you know, when I was growing up, you know, I watched um, a number of of shows, documentaries, movies, often with my my mom and my grandmother, you know, now I know how much, thankfully, you know, my parents and, and I'm fully vaccinated that we're able to have these moments, you know, with, with my children where, you know, my mom, you know, me and my kids will now watch things together. And I do think um, we are quite oriented around having content, at least as part of what we do with Hidden Light, that really can be not only accessible, um, but feel relevant and dynamic and inviting, inclusive of, of those many generations kind of uh, within a home and also, you know, a, across, across homes. Because I do think um, we haven't had that as enough of a goal often um, in, in television and in movies, scripted or unscripted. Things often are just for very mature audiences or just for kids. And um, we want to kind of break down those those silos because you know it's not that we don't have common conversations we certainly do and so we want to have common conversations about common content and common experiences that hopefully hidden light can really help facilitate and you know i would just add to mary that i think the pandemic really brought this home for a lot of people one of the most common things i hear from you know grandmothers my age plus you know younger 
women like uh, Chelsea and even younger ones who uh, I work with or know is, you know, when everybody was at home, it was a little bit of a struggle to find content that was interesting to everybody that would, would capture the attention of kids, teenagers and adults. And there was a, a real desire to sort of share that experience together again. And, you know, this may run a little bit against the current of what is seen as, you know, very bankable and producible over the past 10, 20 years. But I think there's a growing desire and interest in having, you know, more platforms with more content that can cross generations. Um, and I hope that's true because it's what I think is uh, the uh, reason for Hidden Light, what we're trying to accomplish, but more importantly, because I think we got to start talking and listening to each other again, <laughs> or we're headed for even more difficulties. But, but in a way, uh, uh, this, this is a compliment, even if it doesn't sound like it, in a way, you, uh, you're partly wanting to use television here uh, and visual media to make a difference in the world. You're wanting uh, kids or grannies or granddads to look at this uh, and to think differently, particularly about women, but also about, as you've just said, issues of racism, whatever. And I wonder, I mean, it used to be the case that um, loads and loads of actors from the, um, from the movie business went into politics, you know, we can all name them. Um, now there seems to be a trend the other way, that people in public life, because uh, you're not the only ones, are, are deciding that, oh look, let's think about working through television. Now, do you think that you're, do you think television is going to be a good medium for getting your message across? And is it going to be, are you going to reach different people? Is it going to be a better message, a, a, a better platform? I mean, how optimistic are you about this? I think it's an inevitable and invaluable platform, uh, Mary, in today's world. And I agree with you that, you know, everything has changed because of the way that we are uh, provided and consuming information, uh, the, the streaming world, the you know, the world that we're living in now, which is content hungry, but often, you know, repetitive and not particularly creative and informative even. Um, so yeah, I, I'll give you a quick example. So, you know, we're in, the, we're in the early stages of adapting another book we bought by Gail Zemeck Lemon called The yeah. Daughters of Kabani. This is an unforgettable story of an all-female Kurdish militia who took on ISIS in northern Syria and won. Now we're working closely with the Kurdish creative community, so our film brings that story to life in the most authentic way possible. So just think about it. It's a war movie, but who's on the front line? Kurdish Muslim women. Who's advising them? Frankly, some US military special forces who are amazed at their courage and their determination in a part of the world that has captured our attention, but we still don't know very much about. Bringing that story to life does so many things all at once. We hope it's a compelling, incredibly engrossing story, but also getting people sitting, you know, in the UK, US, or anywhere in the world saying, oh, wow, I didn't, I didn't know anything about this. And what's going on that I don't know also about? And, and I think that's a really important mission because I do think audiences are hungry for great stories and they're more open than ever as to who those stories come from. Yeah. And do you, do, you, do you think that the kind of um, backup and production values and the sort of agenda that Hidden Light offers, do you, are you... Are you convinced that you're going to get those stories across in a way that's more productive than if it was a kind of blockbuster movie? I can imagine a blockbuster movie about, you know, all female fighters against ISIS. You're going to be doing something different. 
of what? Yeah. Well, look, it, it could be a movie, which is on a streaming channel, as yeah. well as in theaters. You know, we're just in the beginning yeah. of adapting the book. So we haven't said what exactly it's going to be. But honestly, I think either or any format could bring that story to life. What do you think, Chels? No, I mean, I, I completely agree. But I would just say, Mary, I think that, you know, if that isn't the case, if it doesn't feel um, kind of not only relevant, but powerful, and we do know often the production value is, you know, not synonymous, but at least facilitating kind of that, that powerful presence, um, kind of whether someone's sitting in a theater or, or watching at home, you know, then sort of shame on us, right? I think it's on us to ensure that kind of that uh, dynamism and kind of whatever investment is needed to facilitate that happens, right? Then th that is now our job, um, which we clearly take very seriously. So you have a responsibility to the story and to the original teller to Completely. put that out in the world. Completely. Uh, you haven't been doing this for very long, but uh, you're obviously you know, your faces say that you're really enjoying it. You know, this is, you know, this is interesting, it's fun, there's a job to be done here. Um, uh, I, you know, and you look as if you're thriving on it. I, I wonder if you think over what it's been, just over a, a year and a half since just before lockdown, that you've been actively working on Hidden Light. Um, what do you think you've learned about television? <laughs> um, the good or bad, either I'll, of you. I'll go first. I'll go first. Um, you know, Mary, this is going to sound so um, kind of like duh. I don't quite know what the UK equivalent of duh is. Duh. Like duh, duh. For duh. In America. Whereas I, because I, you know, have had friends that have worked in television as, as writers, producers, kind of actors, directors. Um, and I had always heard kind of them um, and I'd sometimes had gone to visit them while they were working. There were always so many people around, but I don't think I quite understood just how many people there are and how many different important jobs there are to ensure that everything looks kind of easy and seamless. And so, you know, I have certainly just been incredibly um, humbled to be able to now work with so many different people who have so many different jobs that I now have newfound, just deep uh, appreciation for and kind of really understand that, you know, very good television, like anything in life, is certainly a team effort and that the team is often quite uh, extensive. Um, and it's just been such a joy to work with so many amazing, wonderful people um, now who we're really lucky are on our Hidden Light team and also you know, really across the just uh, fantastic team that um, we've been so fortunate to work with um, uh, from Apple. So uh, that's been so fun to kind of, especially coming out of a pandemic, kind of meet all these new, amazing, talented <laughs> people who we are now lucky enough to work with. I just didn't know there would be so many, and yet I'm so happy there are. <laughs> well, that's that's really great, fun. Chelsea. What about you, Helen? You know, in a, you know the, the Gutsy Women production um, is a combination, obviously, of conversation, but also action. So without spilling any secrets, which Apple would not be happy about. We've done some incredible things um, that the women- Although that, sometimes, sometimes my mom is like, Chelsea would love to do that. <laughs> and I would love to just sit right here and cheer her on. I'm like, we feel like we should come. And my mom is like, I'm good. <laughs> we can hardly that. wait. Yeah, when you see the series, you're, you'll you'll understand why. Um, so we've we've been doing some really interesting things. Some of which, to be honest and fair, um, I let Chelsea do uh, solo, and I um, you know took a a supervisory role. But doing the production and seeing what goes in to produce really high quality um, content has been thrilling. And you know. We really are excited about this US-UK partnership that we have through Hidden Light because it's not only that the UK has incredibly strong production expertise, but it's a great jumping off point to reach Africa, to reach the Middle East. So 
in addition to working with the team that we're working with now, we expect to work with a lot of other teams. And like I said, Daughters of Kabani, we expect to work with a you know team that uh, certainly represents and includes uh, the Kurdish uh, creative uh, community. So I, I think this has been one of the great joys because this is really a world-class operation and we, we feel a big responsibility to, to try to you know, step up to that and do our part. <laughs> well, I'm clearly waiting for see Chelsea kind of waterboarding over a waterfall or something like this. <laughs> but um, we, we'll obviously have to wait and see. Um, I, I, you know, your enthusiasm, it comes over. You know, you're, you're dead keen. And, you know, I know you're not just being polite, but I suspect there are some things, nevertheless, that, you know, after, you know, a couple of years in television, you think, God, sometimes they do things in a very weird way. You know, I mean, I, I've never understood why it takes so long, and I've never understood, you know, why it matters if the boom is showing in the picture. I just, you know, everybody knows it's there. <laughs> why does it matter? Now, your kind of fresh outlook here, I mean, you must be wanting to change a bit. Yeah, yeah. well, maybe you should talk to us in five years. Uh, you know, we, 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 of course, don't intend always to be in front of the camera. It just happened that, you know, Gutsy Women is, uh, you know, is our, our uh, uh, project. Uh, so we intend to, you know, be working, looking uh, over the shoulder of a director or, or being in a script meeting and doing the kind of, uh, you know, very hands-on involvement that doesn't put us in front. But Mary, you are 100% correct. It does take a long time. And, you know, when you, when you film something and it's pretty intense and you feel like, whoa, okay. I mean, we talked about really tough things with uh, these women. And then all of a sudden they say, okay, now we've got to reshoot it from a wide angle, or now we're going to send a drone up and get the really broad view of everything. Yeah, you do kind of go, really? Okay, come on. <laughs> I mean, that they is... They know what they're doing. They know, they what, they're know doing. what they're doing. And, and we're new to it, so, you know, we're just kind of along for the ride. We're having a great time. <laughs> I think it's when they say at about six o'clock, we're going to go and photograph the birds now. And so, you know, you're just <laughs> in the middle of something. They all go and photograph the bloody birds, you know, because they look so nice in the evening sun. But yeah, um, <laughs> think, come on, we're making a film about the Romans, you know, uh, not birds. Um, <laughs> but, but, you know, obviously, you know, we're both in some ways a bit newbie to television. But you, this is really where I want to end. We're, you have come from a position where you've been without control in many ways on the other side of the camera. Uh, you know, people have been peering at you, and I'm sure they were peering at you too, Chelsea, in ways that you didn't particularly want. Right. Do you, does it make you reflect a bit back onto those experiences of being the camera fodder? Or have you left all that behind? Well, I certainly think, you know, Mary, for me, I never want anyone to feel awkward, right? Or to feel as if there's any kind of hidden agenda, despite us being called hidden light. We're very candid, transparent, inclusive for what we um, hope to do what our intentions are. And that is, you know, I think at least partly because I haven't always felt that way yeah. um, when I've been the subject. Yeah. What about you? Helen? You know, Mary, it's interesting because, yeah, I've had a, a lot of, uh, you know, shall we say difficult uh, moments with the press over my very long uh, public uh, political career. And I, I think if I had known more then, uh, kind of what I know now, I might have been more um, more effective in dealing with some of the moments that I right. frankly found myself in. Uh, it's never fun to have a gotcha moment or to have someone misrepresent you or make up something about you, which you know I've had a lot of experience with. But I think I would have been a little more uh, you know, understanding and even willing to kind of figure out a, a different approach rather than, you know, kind of throwing my hands up and saying, oh my gosh, what do you expect? You know, that's just yeah. the way they are. I think I might have been uh, a more, uh, you know, more successful yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, in, in dealing with whatever came my way. 
But, you know, part of, as, as Chelsea said, is, you know, we're interested in letting people really tell their stories and not sort of prejudge those stories. I mean, we've had some difficult interviews. Uh, there, there have been some people that were really um, challenging because of who they are or who they were or what they believe. And so we've had to kind of park our biases at the door before we went in to uh, uh, deal with them. Um, but I think it provided for better television. It wasn't so formulaic, like, oh, okay, now the interviewer is going to jump on that and pin the person down. Uh, so I, I feel like all of my experience probably has made me a more, uh, you know, a more effective person in front of the camera for this uh, project. I think that's absolutely wonderful, and we could go on talking about this all afternoon, but we're certainly, I think, looking forward to seeing some of these and hearing some of these stories and to uh, your parachute jump or whatever you're going to be doing when <laughs> she insists that you do. And so we'll be glued to gutsy women waiting for the moment. But meanwhile, I think we really um, sadly have to say Thank you very, very much to you, Hillary Clinton, Chelsea Clinton, Secretary and Doctor. Um, thank you, yes. and we hope to see you soon.